Hi, my name is Your Dad, and in this video I'm going to be making a remote control Rogal Dawn tank. This is one of the most epic and glorious cupcake delivering machines you will ever see in your life, and if you want to see how I made it, stick around for this video. This video was made in collaboration with uh, Play on Tabletop, and uh, that is another YouTube channel who actually plays with their little plastic soldier men in games. Uh, I think they call it Warhammers. I don't really know, but they asked me if I would make them a remote control tank for them to use on their channel, and of course, I said, you know what, I will do this. So I started out by building the chassis of this tank so that I could get a feel for how I was going to put everything together and then I proceeded to design the treads for this vehicle. Now I'm a bit of a schmuck and I didn't record any of the designing of the treads so please don't hate me for that. I then took all the treads and 3D printed them and once I was absolutely sure they were cured and ready to go I put together some tracks. That was way too easy, thank you so much George. By the way, George edited a portion of this video for me and I hope that you appreciate it as much as I do. I honestly love this guy's edits, it's just such a pity that it's so much work to edit one of these videos that I don't think he's ever going to edit anything for us ever again. However, let's enjoy this moment of uh, glorious editing while we can. I then put together all the electronics that needed to go in this vehicle. That's going to start out with a BEC. The BEC BEC is something that regulates the voltage. The voltage needs to be in the area of 5 volts for almost all the components on this tank. And so I need to put together some kind of contraption that allows me to put any voltage in and get 5 volt out to power all the electronics on board. I changed the stock battery connector to a smaller XT30 and I did that so that I could have a control over what plugs I'm going to use to plug in and out of the system. Might be a little bit crazy of me and in hindsight now that I've spent a little bit more time building these things it actually is crazy of me to have used the Spectrum receiver which is DSMX2 and I only used it because I understand how it works and uh, I know how to set it up on my radio however I've figured out a different system for this I'm using a smaller receiver from Crossfire which fits much easier into uh, smaller and tighter builds getting on to the build that is at hand actually I needed to make this top turret spin and the way that I decided to do that was by making a solid mounting on the inside and then I would mount a servo to that solid mounting and uh, put the hard mount of the servo onto the inside of the turret which means that when you turn the servo the top part of the turret would just spin along with the servo. This took a little bit of fiddling and faffing but I finally and eventually got it right. And once I had settled on the final shape that was going to hold everything in place, I glued it all in and plugged it in to see if it would work. And while I was at it and in that little gap, I fixed up the servo to move the turret up and down too. And with the top of the tank completed, I was happy to start wiring up the LEDs that were inside of this tank. I made a huge error when I LED'd the tank and I put a couple of LEDs that needed more voltage on the same line as LEDs that needed less voltage, which meant that I need to change things, but I will change that later on in the video and if it becomes confusing, I'm very sorry about that. Yeah. 
Yes, Editor George, you are right. There was not enough light. Also, the reason that you needed to do an extra edit with lights was because I had powered them up the wrong way around and I needed to add two plugs for the lights. This meant that I had extra electricity to power another light on the top of the tank, which was going to be the spotlight. I very carefully carved out the cage of the spotlight that goes on the top of this tank and drilled out the bottom to add a light on the inside of it and uh, soldered all that up with uh, the most greatest of difficulties one can ever muster. When building stuff like this, it's very important to test things, so I regularly test that my connections are good before I put anything in with any kind of glue. And to completely finish off the top of the tank, I added a little magnet on top of the servo and in the center of the top part of the tank, just to keep it all together so I can get back into it in the future. I also 3D printed these parts to hold some LEDs out of clear resin that go underneath the back of the engine cover to make it look like the engine is hot. I added orange and red LEDs in there and this was powered from a completely separate circuit inside of the tank. And now, counter to the illusion that I had already got the tracks solved, I actually didn't. And I needed to build the part that was going to hold the tracks in place. This meant that I needed to, at first, make sure that the sides of the tanks would stick together and come apart so that I could get in and service the treads if I ever needed to. That meant that I needed to stick some magnets into the wonderfully, perfectly shaped sized holes that G-Dubs already gives us in this tank. I'm pretty sure they designed this tank for us to make a remote control tanks out of although the part of adding the axle for the front section was not easy I'm not gonna lie I had to cut off this little nub and stick in my own nub so that I could mount my own little hub on top of the nub I also designed and 3D printed what I think should be called a sprocket. I don't actually really know. It's the thing that drives the treads around the circular distance, what makes the tank. It's the thing that drives the treads. I don't know the fancy words for building tanks because I don't build tanks as a living. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making a plastic toy drive because I can. It's time for me to drill out holes because I need to have a drive system for these things. What I ended up doing was making the same system as I did on the flamer tank and I had a gear driving that uh, gear that drives the treads. It's so complicated, I don't even know how it works. I ended up building three or four of these systems before I finally settled on one that actually worked because to be honest, this was one of the most difficult setups for me. The tracks just would not turn very nicely. I probably should have made more bearings and made the system a lot smoother, but in the end, I ended up going with the system that I did, and I feel like it works, so we have a working tank, and that's all that was really the aim of the start of this project. This is the part of the stage of the building that I need to actually start hard mounting things and permanently putting them in their place. This is the scariest bit of the entire build for me because up until now, everything was just a what if. And once I've glued these in, there's no going back and if I get that gear mesh wrong, we're gonna have a very bad time. <laughs> Once I was convinced that I had glued everything in the right place, I added glue around the chassis and taped it together to let it dry overnight. When I came back the next day, I took apart the entire build again so that I can start working on the next part of this project. And that's going to be making the electronics fit inside of this tank. 
but not before my ADHD brain takes me on a completely different tangent and I completely redesign the gear that goes onto the draft system of this tank. And the reason I did this was because the original one was a little bit too thin and it wasn't quite getting enough bite, so I ended up giving it a slightly thicker girth and uh, giving it a bit more space to bite onto. I also 3D printed a little bezel thing that I can mount the electronics onto on the inside of the top part of the tank and I threaded all the wires and cables to make sure that they looked as pretty as I possibly could. I also mounted the receiver onto that little mount that I made in the back of the tank and made sure that everything moved and the wires cleared each other without causing any havoc when the top of the tank spins around. Once I was completely satisfied that the electronics were gonna fit how I wanted to, I plugged everything in for one last check to make sure that it all worked before I did any more permanent gluing. I then moved on to the glorious hole at the bottom of this Rogal Dawn tank that uh, Games Workshop left specifically for people like me. I added a nice little rim on the inside of that hole so that I could mount some magnets too, and then I glued some magnets onto a little piece of plastic which I also printed for the bottom of this hole. I'm not gonna lie, I did steal this from Mikey from uh, Hellstorm Wargaming and he basically made a nice little uh, cover for the bottom of these tanks which you can get and uh, I magnetized it and then used it so that I can get access to the battery compartment to start or stop this tank. I did a little bit more wiring and made sure that everything was plugged in how it needed to be and then I promptly stuck the top onto the tank. In the belly of the tank, there's a mystery hole stand. So we build a special cover, my name's your dad, not your mother. Naturally, once I've got all this together, I'm obviously going to want to play and this was the time that I tested all the electronics were working and that my tank was a working tank and this is the moment of success and I will allow you to enjoy it. Usually, once I get to the moment that the project that I'm working on actually succeeds and works, I am at that point relaxed completely because it's now time to just start working on some of the greeblies and additional things. I added the gats onto the side of the tank and I added some magnets so that they could be removable as well. I'm not sure why they would need to be removable, but I made them removable anyway. And I put together everything that needed to be additionally added onto the top of the sponsoons and all the rest. I don't need, I did all the stuff that needed to be done to finalize this project and then took everything apart to absolute pieces one more last time to get it ready for painting. Now this video is not about the painting of this model at all and I'm gonna probably just skip completely over how I painted this entire model and it's gonna be one of those things where I do a little bit of a mood, movie, 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 magic, those words were hard, at this point I'm just gonna call this model done. Hopefully at the very least this video gave you some inspiration to try something new and different with your models or maybe not, maybe it was just something to do while you sat in the toilet. I would like to say a super special thank you to my patrons because genuinely without the patrons none of this kind of project could even be possible because they help to support me in making the nonsense that I come up with. It's at this point of the video where also from thanking the patrons I need to go to telling everyone else who didn't enjoy this to just f off because that's what I do at the end of my videos and uh, if you don't like it then just follow the instructions. <laughs>